Marek's Marek's disease. Marek's disease is named after Joseph Marek, who first described the disease in 1907. It is one of the most common avian infections worldwide. With the exception of strict pathogen-free animals, every chicken is presumed to be infected. But clinical disease doesn't always show. Subclinically, growth rate and egg production may be affected. Chickens are the natural hosts, but quails can be infected too. And turkeys can be infected experimentally. It is caused by a virus of the genus Mardivirus of the family Herpesviridae, subfamily Alpha Herpesvirinae, the Galid Herpes Virus 2, or Marek's Disease Virus 1. Side note, Galid Herpes Virus 1 is another virus that causes infectious laryngotrachitis. So, all virulent strains of Marek's disease fall under this and are divided into pathotypes, which are mild, virulent, very virulent, and take a guess. Very virulent plus. A virulent strains fall under Galid Herpes Virus 3, Marek's Disease Virus 2, and Meliagrid Herpes Virus 1, or Turkey Herpes Virus, or Marek's Disease Virus 3. So, yeah. For chickens and turkeys, respectively. Because they are virulent and closely related, they are usually used in vaccines against Marek's disease. Transmission. Transmission of Galid Herpes Virus 2 is pretty interesting. Chickens are infected by inhalation of feather dust or dander from an infected bird. This is because in the infected chicken, the virus is released from the epithelium of feather follicles. The dust can fall on the litter and the virus can survive there for months. Infection spreads quickly from bird to bird. Even vaccinated birds can shed the virus. Less so than unvaccinated birds, but they still can. Fortunately though, Marek's disease is not known to be transmitted vertically. Pathophysiology So anyway, when the virus is inhaled by the bird, it infects respiratory epithelial cells. Viral replication occurs locally, and a viral immediate early gene is activated. Producing viral interleukin-8. This is homologous to the host's own interleukin-8. An inflammatory response starts, attracting neutrophils and macrophages. This is where the virus takes the opportunity to infect macrophages. And eventually, it'll go to infect B cells. And these cells will carry the virus around in the bloodstream, viremia. What happens in B cells is known as a semi-productive lytic viral replication. Semi-productive because only a few new virons are created. In some references, it is also described as restrictive productive. So it's just semi-productive. And then lytic. Because B cells lies. And die. So with all these B cells dying, there is a decrease in overall antibody production. The bird suffers from immunosuppression. Infected B cells also attract T cells. In CD4 positive T cells, the Marek disease virus integrates itself into the genome of the cell. This is the start of the latent phase of viral infection, where the virus escapes from immune detection. Herpes viruses in general like to do this. Animals are persistently infected, and during times of stress, the disease resurfaces. Some CD4 positive T cells are transformed into T cell lymphomas. These transformed cells can then infiltrate peripheral nerve fibers, particularly the vagus, brachial, and sciatic nerves, causing what's known as transient paralysis syndrome, where chickens become ataxic for a bit, then recover. In coordination occurs first. The classic picture of a chicken with one leg forward and one leg back is because of the unilateral paralysis of the sciatic nerve. Wing dropping may also be evident with the brachial nerve affected. The chickens can die because they'd be unable to get to their food and water. In acute disease, 
birds may only show depression, then die. A lymphoproliferative phase can also occur when reactivated, whereby disseminated lymphoma formation occurs in visceral organs, the nervous system, the musculoskeletal system, skin, and eyes. The term skin mucosis refers to enlarged feather follicles where the virus replicates to be released into the environment. This may be seen during meat inspection when broilers are defeathered, condemning the meat. The legs may have a distinct red coloration. Hence, this is sometimes called red leg syndrome. Ocular lymphomatosis results in gray irises and can lead to partial or total blindness. This usually occurs in older birds. Diagnosis Necropsy on a number of birds that have succumbed to the disease may reveal enlarged nerves and lymphoid tumors. It is of note to differentiate Marek's disease from lymphoid leukosis and reticuloendotheliosis, two diseases with similar lesions. To confirm the diagnosis, immunohistochemistry and PCR may be done. Control Vaccination is the principal strategy for control. The vaccine may be prepared with turkey herpes virus or gallid herpes virus 3. It doesn't necessarily prevent the spread, but can mitigate clinical disease, particularly the neoplastic lesions in the viscera. Peripheral neurologic signs can still occur, but at a reduced incidence. Reduction of environmental virus load by thorough cleaning and disinfection and by proper biosecurity measures is beneficial to control. To summarize, Marek's disease is caused by the gallied herpes virus 2 of the genus Mardivirus, family Herpesviridae. It is transmitted via inhalation of contaminated feather dander. Clinical signs involve peripheral neurologic disease and lymphoproliferative disease. Diagnosis is through identification of gross lesions by necropsy and confirmed via immunohistochemistry and slash or PCR. Control through vaccination and biosecurity measures.